All right, guys, what's up? So today, this video is a little bit different. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this. Um, if you do, like, subscribe, helps out so much. We're almost to 1,000. But today's gonna be how I became a hacker. Today is my story. And it's not one that um, is very typical for hackers, I'll say that. Um, but this has been requested a lot. A lot of people have asked how I got to where I am and things like that. And so I'm gonna try and keep it brief, but I'm gonna cover a lot because I didn't do a typical route, okay? So first first things first, um, my first introduction to even computers and stuff, I know I don't look that old, but I am older than I look. Um, and so when I was young, when I was a kid, um, computers weren't a thing. Uh, I mean, they existed, but nobody had them at home. We didn't have computers at home. Um, I wasn't really allowed to use computers till I was probably 15, 16. Um, it just wasn't common. It wasn't a, a big thing for everyone to have a computer. Um, so when I finally got introduced to it was when I was, I think, 15. I took a typing class um, at school. And the typing class, just literally all it was was typing. We sat there. You put a sheet over your hand so you couldn't see, and you typed, right? And it was fun, whatever. And this was when school started using computers a little bit. So anyway... Um, Cybersecurity wasn't a thing at this time. People weren't cyber conscious. They didn't have, you know, knowledge. So whoever set up the computers at the school didn't pay attention. And down here at the taskbar, all I did was look at it. And I was like, huh, interesting. There's this weird program. And I believe it was VNC at the time. I can't remember. But anyway, it was a remote desktop program. And it allowed me to connect to every computer in the school and remote desktop in. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was taking over everybody's computer. I was taking over the principals and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. I can't remember if I actually got in trouble for it um, or not, but this went on for a few weeks where I'd be in typing class and all of a sudden everyone's computer's going crazy because with, you know, what do you do when you're a kid? You know, I was messing with their mice while they're trying to type and, you know, just whatever. So, that was my first um, hack, if you will, right? And so from there, I was very interested in it. I started doing more, I was big into video games, so I started doing social engineering to try and get accounts, right? Um, and this is highly illegal now, um, It's but back then, I wouldn't say it wasn't illegal, it was definitely illegal, but I was just a kid and doing didn't know anything, right? So I, I would never do this now, but what I was doing is, um, like me and my buddy, we played WoW, and so when we played WoW, we would see people that, you know, had all this stuff in WoW and we didn't want to waste our time doing it because we're lazy. And so we called Blizzard and we'd sit there and we'd tell them, hey, I changed my email, my this and that, blah, blah, blah. And we'd get them to give us the account. And this happened a handful of times where we'd get the account and we'd just take their stuff and then give the account back. We didn't, we didn't want the account. We just wanted the stuff, right? The money. So... That was kind of my first introductions to it. And then I grew up a little bit, went to, you know, finished school. And I knew I wasn't going, at the time, cybersecurity was not a job. Um, hack, pen testing wasn't a job. I mean, if it probably was somewhere, but this hadn't been, there was no book on it. There was no like, hey, when you graduate, you can go do this. Like that was never a thing. Um, cybersecurity degrees weren't a thing. So I couldn't go to school and get it. The only degree... Um, when I was going to college was cyber or computer science. And I did not have any interest in computer science. So I went to college. Um, I played basketball in college. And when I, I got hurt my first year, tore my knee and lost, I didn't lose my scholarship. I finished the year, um, but I couldn't play anymore for the rest of my life. So when that happened, I always wanted to join the military. So I joined the military. And when I did, this was my first career because I, one of my summer gigs was lineman. I worked with lineman. I was not a lineman because lineman takes a long time to be. Um, but I, I worked with lineman, and so I always wanted to be a lineman. So I went and joined the military as a lineman, and this is the career field I did. It was 3D1X7. This doesn't exist anymore. Um, they changed all the career fields. But this is when I joined the Air Force. Here's what we did. This was my tech school, right? So this is pretty cool, uh, uh, something I'm really proud of. Um, every cable dog I've ever met has been a hardworking person typically. And so for me that, that was very important. I don't like laziness and I'm tough to work with if you, if you're lazy. 
so you can see we do we did towers we do poles we do a lot of things um this is this is some of the cool stuff we got to do we learned rappelling we got to do all kinds of stuff so this is just the tower portion but yeah this was my first career field in the in the air force and i did this for years um then i was aligned on the civilian side for a couple of years and while i was doing this um i was interested in in it but i didn't have a way to dive in I worked for a telecom company and when I was working for them, I was actually able to kind of work on some of the computer systems um, inside the central office. When I did that, I started to gain interest more. And then um, from there, you know, I knew the basics. I started learning Linux and things like that. And then I went over and I took a tour with DISA. So this is a, I took a year long tour and all I do is I travel the world and I went to 12 countries, 49 states. I traveled nonstop. I traveled the world, and all I do is install for them. So I take a server, plug it in, plug it in, log into it real quick, make sure it's up, and boom, hands off, right? But what I did differently than a lot of the other guys is every time someone else would be in there, like a vendor, like someone that works for HP or someone that works for, you know, Dell or something would be in the, in the same server room as me. I would be like, Hey, can you show me a few things? Can you do this? And they say, yeah, sure. And they'd show me a couple of things. And then I started working, um, at some, some high level buildings we'll say. Um, and so I started working with like some of the secret service guys and stuff like that. And they were really cool guys. And a lot of them, they had hackers there. And so I would ask them, how'd you get there? What'd you do? And they'd say, you need to get certifications. You need to do this. You need to do that. And I just picked their brain nonstop. I'd be very annoying. Um, I remember I emailed the head of DISA at the time. I'm sure he didn't even read it. And I was just like, look, here's the deal. I'm here. I'm serious about this. And I want every opportunity thrown my way. Um, never got an email back, but I've done that ever since. So just heads up. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I've always emailed my supervisor or someone above me to let them know any opportunity I want it. Okay. So when I did this, uh, an opportunity did come up to get, take CEH and I took my CEH with DISA, um, and I passed it and I learned through a lot of very boring, boring videos and lectures. We'll say that because DISA and the government in general does a lot of talking at you. We'll say um, where they're just talking, it's dry, it's boring. But I had to sit there and I just would just replay it over and over and over until I got it, right? And then I'd go home and I'd practice everything I learned. So I did this for as long as I could. And then I went back to my job as a lineman and I was just like, you know, this is just boring to me because I love working with my hands. I physically love working. Um, anyone that knows me knows I'm always doing some sort of project, whether I'm remodeling my house or doing something outside. Like I love working with my hands, but it was intellectually boring. It was doing the same thing over and over and over and over. And I said, I can't do this the rest of my life. So even though I was making good money, I said, I can't do this. So I went and I took a job. Uh, I took a huge pay cut and a job full-time active duty at a base. And basically this was the career field I did, cyber systems operations. So this here, let's see if they've got it here. This video is not going to really show much because it's working on computers. But what Cyber Systems Operations is, is basically a system administrator for whatever, whatever system they need you for. Um, I did a weapon system, so that was a cool mission. It was really cool. I got to see some really cool stuff, do some really cool stuff. Um, and then one thing I forgot to mention too, as well as with the 3D1X7, I got to deploy and when I deployed, I got to go to Diyarbakir, Turkey, which was really cool because it's right on the Syrian border. And at the time, this was a war-torn area. Um, this was a combat deployment at the time. And when I did that, I got to work directly with base com or base com, excuse me, with combat comms. And so I got to see a lot of the systems they use, which turned out to be the same systems that I ended up working on when I was doing um, cyber systems operations. So then I switch over to this career field, which is cyber systems operations. And I'm basically system administrating or taking care of the administration duties. And then from there, I just built on my skill set, And then I also started building out 
their um, cyber defense, basically. And I, I really took over the cyber portion of it and became the offensive cyber specialist for the unit. Um, and when I did that, one of the things we got to do that was really cool is help build this. And this is the cyber range for the state of Illinois. So now the state of Illinois, because of the work that I did and the work that many others did as well, um, they got a cyber range now. So this cyber range literally allows us to have red team, blue team missions anytime we want on any systems. And this include this is with Cobalt Strike and some of the best tools in the world that are out there that we can practice with. So this is really important. Um, then another thing I got I did while I was um, on DISA, or not on DISA, I'm sorry, when I was uh, in my other career field, is I w went to Stratcom and helped set up that building. I did a six-month tour out there. Um, Stratcom is the nuclear mission, and from there we did some really cool stuff. And again, I got to see some of that stuff in action. And when you see it, that intrigues my mem or my mind more. It makes me go to it. So from there, when I was done with DISA and I was done with that, I had a full-time job as cyber systems operations. Um, and I was very good at it. But the one thing I lacked, and I knew I lacked it, was networking. I was not good at networking. Um, and I just struggled with it because it was so boring to me to learn, right? So what did I do? I switched jobs. I switched jobs to this is the new one. Um, it was cyber, cyber transport is what it was. Um, they changed all the career fields. That's the only reason I don't know the n numbers now. But um, so I changed to cyber, cyber transport, which is networking. And I stayed in the same shop. I did the same. Um, I worked on the same systems, but I was now the network technician. So I did this just because I need to learn the networking. Uh, it's something I need to do. So from there, I went ahead and I started building again my my resume, my skill set, all of this. And the entire time I'm doing this, I also was doing a. I'll show you here. I was doing a a mis or not a mission, but I was doing a program called Cyber Patriot, where I would go to high schools and I would teach kids cyber defense. Right? I would teach this, and that made me even better. That's what made me grow more because when you're teaching you have to really know your stuff and so i had to learn more than i normally would right so going through all this this is years and years and years of me just learning security now the reason i harp on my channel about learning the fundamentals is because if you learn just security and then someone goes hey this this is happening or whatever you have no idea what that back end is doing and that causes you to go, uh, crap. So you need to know how systems work in order to secure them. So that's why I harp it so much on my channel. But so from here, I taught Cyber Patriot for quite a few years. I can't remember how long because they um, ended up shutting it down during COVID. But um, so yeah, so this is how I learned to teach basically. And then from there, one thing I learned from my the way I learned it was basically there is no videos out there that I don't want to say dumb it down, but make it make sense for people like me who didn't grow up in IT. Um, so that's that's been my goal on my channel is to make it make sense for people that don't have IT bred in them. You know, I worked with a lot of guys that went to STEM schools where they just basically learned cybersecurity their entire life. Um, I didn't have that. No, I don't want to say I didn't have the opportunity because I probably did. I didn't do that, right? So from here, uh, once I was here, I built my resume out. I was offered a lot of teaching jobs um, at some pretty big universities and things. Um, I was offered, but it wasn't my passion. My passion was to keep pen testing because at this time, uh, I was doing pen tests for the, the state of Illinois. I was doing a lot of um, things like that, red teaming, blue teaming, purple teaming stuff. Um, I was winning competitions and stuff. But the big thing for me was I wanted to keep my hands on the keyboard. I did not want to teach because as soon as I start teaching 100% of my time, I felt like you're going to start losing the real world skill set. So um, I, I did not take any of those positions. And I ended up waiting until the correct position came up and I took a cyber cybersecurity engineering position, um, which is where I'm still at today. I love my job more than any job I've ever had in my life. 
and I'm extremely happy. So that's how I became a hacker. Now, a lot of that may not seem like it's necessarily hacking, but it is because during this, I'm teaching hacking or I was teaching hacking during this. I was doing competitions during this. I was running pen tests for, you know, the state for the different companies. And during this, a lot of what I did was um, because I didn't have a cyber position yet. Um, a lot of what I was doing was I would go to local companies and I would say, hey, I'll I'll do a pen test for you. When I'm done with that pen test, all I want is a letter of recommendation. And I would take that letter of recommendation. So when I went to go apply for a cyber position, I didn't feel like I was underqualified. I felt overqualified. I felt like I have years of experience just because it's not experience with a company that you guys know doesn't mean it's not experience, right? So when I went and I applied, the every company I pretty much applied for thought the same thing because I had proof. I had letters of recommendation. I had videos. I had everything I needed to say, look, I know what I'm talking about and here's my skill set. And I could back that up. So that was a big thing for me when I was coming in is a lot of people ask me, well, how do you get experience if no one will hire you? You can get experience all day long if no one will hire you. Um, and luckily for me, I had a, a system administrator job and I ran a cyber defense team. So for me, it was pretty easy to validate that experience because I I did do the cyber portion. I was My title was offensive cyber specialist. So people knew that I knew what I was talking about. But I notice a lot of people struggle with that. They say, I, I can't get experience. I can't get experience. And that's just a, an excuse in my opinion, because you can always get experience. You can go down the street to your mom and pop shop, offer to do a pen test. You can get on Try Hack Me and do some of the hard boxes. You can do whatever you want to do and you can get experience. You can go on LinkedIn and start taking their tests and that validate your experience. You can do a lot of things, um, but a lot of times it's harder than you think. Um, I, I had to grind for years of just grinding for no result at the time, right? Like, it's not like I was grinding, learning something and going, oh, perfect. I've got a skill set. I got a new job. I grinded for years with nothing to show for it. And technically, because all I just wanted the knowledge. It was something I enjoyed. It was something I loved. And I loved hacking. It was addiction. I got so, so addicted to it that I had to actually pull myself back a little bit because I was too much into it. It was almost unhealthy. So keep in mind, guys, that when you're doing this stuff, it should be enjoyable. It Not necessarily an addiction, but it should be enjoyable. Um, that's, that's the short version. I know it's a little longer video, but that's a short version of how I got to where I am. Um, I've done multiple tours around the world. I've done, worked in some high profile buildings, some high profile missions and done some pretty cool stuff. And when I did that the entire time, the key takeaway was I always went to the guy that's above me or the guy that's where I want to be. And I always asked him, how do I get there? And every time, even if it wasn't a good answer, they gave me an answer. And so I always, always looked for the next step. And I do that today and I will always do that. So take that away, guys. Hopefully that helped you guys. I know it's just kind of my story, but it's not the typical one. Most people go to college, go to this, go to that, get your certs, blah, blah, blah. And they, that's all they do. Um, I purposely didn't tell you guys when I got certs, when I got my degrees, any of that stuff, because that stuff didn't matter in my career. That is stuff that I did for me. And that is something that people I think focus on too much. And I think you guys should focus on getting the correct skill set and gathering the knowledge for yourself, regardless of the certs, the degrees, all that stuff, because this should be a career, not a job. When I say that, I mean, it's long-term. So you have to start building long-term, not building just to get your job. Okay. So hopefully you guys liked it. Hopefully you guys, that helps you guys a little bit. Hopefully it helps somebody. Um, I appreciate you guys so much. Again, if you guys could, please hit the like button, subscribe. Thank you so much and hope you guys have a great day.